Welcome to the Narrowboat that James built. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Today is the day that Lockgate are coming out to install my reflex diesel stove, and I cannot wait. It's bloody freezing. Paul's instructions have been followed. I have made a fireplace and hearth. So um, the reflex diesel stove can be installed there. Um, the other thing that needs to happen is I need to excavate some of the spray foam on the ceiling so uh, they can drill the hole for the flue. Right, Paul from Lockgates just phoned me to tell me he's arrived. Uh, it's a bit of a walk from the van to the boat, so I'm gonna go down and help him. All right, some of their kits already in. They've gone back to get some more. Um, we've just had a little look at the fireplace and the hearth install. Paul said it's fine. Um, he's also said that the distance between the flue and the stove has been reduced slightly which is good because it means I've got a bit more room to play with here. And he also says that the flue can be quite easily disconnected from the stove and then from the ceiling or from the roof uh, collar. So I can then put my boards in, so I can remove it, put my boards in, put the trim back up and I won't have to have a split through it, which is really good news. So, so far, so good. Days, that's gonna look alright, isn't it? Yeah, it will. Proper smart. The stove, I think, could look better being kind of equal from there to there. And that should. If you were going to 45, that would put you that pretty much facing that curve. Yeah. You still, your seating area over there, you'd still see a flame. Yeah. But generally, tend to kind of offset it, looking a bit more towards the seating. You can see it from your galley up there. It wouldn't take much to come around this corner to see it. Um, but your seating area is where you probably look yeah. at the most. It's just whether the the offsetness is gonna make, yeah, where the flue pipe, yeah. if it's not gonna look, it's gonna look a bit weird being off. You pushed it a bit further into the middle. Uh, yeah, then is it too close to the walls? So that's, that's at 45. Yeah, I'd say that's, I, yeah, I, I reckon just a little bit off like that. So it kind yeah. of, so the flame's a little bit further. I reckon something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Depends. pretty much in the middle of that curve. Yeah, you flew pipes, came straight, that's okay. Got a whole variety of flu angles here so they can work out the best angle and the position of it. I say the greater the distance from the wall, the better, to be honest. Yeah, let's try. Yeah. I reckon that's the position. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Something like what's that to the level of the boat? 
Yeah, it looks good. It's good. Bang on. A bit of fine adjustment is required on the collar to make sure it fits nice and snug on the roof of the boat. The Reflex diesel stove needs diesel which is in there. Yeah. So that's an old diesel R for probably a little bass or something. Yeah. Put it off there, hit the six mil stuff, come into R8, it'll come down, follow this line, so I bet I can get straight on, down through the bulkhead, this side of the steps. So we shim through the metal work. When it comes through under here, it comes through with like a, a P-shape. So right. there won't be a connection under there. Okay. It will just be a, a P-shape. Fine. Which will be tucked up between yeah, just above the swim, maybe something like that. Okay, fine. Sort this sort of level. Yeah. And then when it comes through, there we copper pipe, and we'll follow the copper pipe. Great, and it'll go down through there, will it? Yep. It's the plan. Uh, I can take this apart. In fact, we slightly higher. <laughs> we'll uh, above that. Uh, um, I'll see what I can do. Uh, all your holes have been drilled and tapped. We've got threads in each of the far poles now. <laughs> So we're not doing these too tight because we want to leave a gasket in there, a couple of mil of gasket. That's what the silicon's for to create a gasket. So then we, we've got less chance of having any leak. connection for the pipe goes that way down here we'll have a little fire valve and probably come through through something like that with a bend behind okay so no collection behind so we have an actual bend behind and that can go into the plastic pipe yeah and then the water pipes is there a chance they can go through there or do they or are they going to be can they go through the fireplace as opposed to sitting this side of it yes we can yes. get them so through there can, can we yes so we can put a hole through here Okay, fine. Whichever height we want. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said before, small bend. We'll have a T-piece. So you've got a little bottle vent on top. So if it were to fail, it can vent off any, not pressurise the system. We can go from there. As long as we can get our connection behind there. Yeah. And we can get it all sealed up. That's not the problem. It's just, yeah, as long as we get the spanners behind there. Because I can pre, pre uh, tighten up the bit that goes behind there. And then just one spanner to tighten the bit that goes in. Okay which I think is easy enough. Cool. I think I've got the proportions of this just right. So the outside of the fireplace is in line with there and same on that side there. There's a nice kind of gap inside the, it's not kind of too much near the edge. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And height wise, it's just underneath the mosaics or which will be mosaics and then there'll be trim above there but importantly um i'm going to be able to get the all the pipes and the gubbins and stuff through the fireplace they're not going to be sitting proud of that which is a result so far so good uh, inline filter bowl <laughs> filter sometimes they're really tight to open this one's not too bad but it's got an element inside there when it comes off there you are. That's a washable filter in there. Yeah. Make sure the O-ring's back on when you put it back together. That screws back up. And it's going to come off on this boat. Fuel lines coming down the swim, into a nice little bend, into the top of that. There'll be a right angle in there. The filter bracket will hold that on the bulkhead. Pipe through the bulkhead. Under the stairs, we're going to come down and then follow, follow the side of the boat to the back of the stove. 
drill a hole through there into a fire valve, automatic fire valve. So in the event of a fire, a cabin fire, if it ever gets 70 degrees, it will shut off. Um, so that goes into that tap and then goes off into the regulator there. Yeah, and we've got some plastic pipes. There's going to be heated pipes under there. Uh, we're going to put the copper pipe through plastic pipe and that will stop that heat transfer into the copper and thin fuel. So the next job is filter. So is that a diesel shut off tap? Diesel shut off tap. Yep, so the siphon, siphon tap we've tapped into, reconnected to that. Yep. So we've got a six mil to eight mil. Yep. Uh, then we follow it off in eight mil. Okay. That's the isolation tap. Um, <coughs> there was one there before, we've taken that one off. That's a bit. Yeah, no. fair dues. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and is there another one inside the boat? There will be next to the stove, that's right. Yeah. Right now it's been taken apart, we're going to put it back together again with some liquid PTFE. connected. The stove is going to be gravity fed so it won't require a diesel pump on there but to prime it Paul is sucking diesel through. Oh, so it's in steam now. And now he's blowing it back. That's a fire valve, automatic fire valve, so if it ever gets to 70 degrees, uh, you, can, you can use it as a stopcock isolation tap as well. Uh, but generally, if you're going to isolate the system, you do it from the tank, there's an isolation tap at the, at the cup that comes out of the tank. Um, so that's the best way to isolate, and it shuts the whole lot down then. This is also, like I say, a stopcock. You can turn this fuel off with this, um, or, or leave it on. There's an element inside that melts if it ever gets to 70 degrees centigrade. Um, so if there's a cabin fire, and the pipe work heats up, this part heats up, the element inside melts, shuts fuel off, so it can't feed a fire with diesel. Um, we went to the, the red button, which is here. It's a flame fail device. So the red button pushes a pin down inside, which allows the fuel to come through. There's a thermocouple attached and there's a probe in the burner pot. So when it recognizes the flame, you press the red button, the pin will stay down because it's recognized the flame. If it were to blow out or the flame disappears or you turn it off, anything like that, um, that re thermocouple recognises that, pit, drops the pin, stops the fuel, turns the stove off uh, and shuts the fuel off that way. This is Toby DVR regulator, you find on most diesel stoves now, especially all the reflex level now. Um, it's set to zero at the minute, that's off on the grey knob, so it's up a little bit of a ramp, a bit of resistance and that's the number one. It goes up to number six, they're not marked in numbers, they're marked in notches, but uh, six notches. It's not a click, 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 so you can go to a two and three quarters if you like. Um, comes back down to one, and if you want to turn it off, a bit of resistance, and it drops off to zero, and that'll turn your stove off. This part here I'll show you in a minute, I'll just show you the filter. 
and there's a filter there's a filter in the engine bay on this job and there's also a little filter in here two silver screws um, when you do do this obviously you would do it with the, this stove cold with the red button or without the red button you can turn the isolation tap off um, and check the filter expect up to 100 mil of fuel to come out so if you have a little tub there just to catch up to 100 mil of fuel um, then that is what to expect to come out. It won't have, it might have a residue in it now, but not a, uh, a decent amount. So silver plate, get that gasket out as well. There you are. So two silver screws, silver plate, and a black gasket. And that's, your reg that's a flat filter there. So I tend to put my flat screwdriver in, just gently pop it out, and that'll come out now. That's a washable filter. Wash it, dry it, put it back, and then just start your stove as normal. Only goes in one way up, and that's with that little piece there facing down. If you put it in the wrong way up, it won't go flush. So just turn it over, pop it in, and you're ready with that. So we'll just pop all these bits back on. And I wouldn't even guess the torque setting on these. It's more of a pinch it up till you feel the rubber tight. Right, the guys from Lockgate have gone, it's dark now, there's not much more they can carry on with, but on Saturday they're going to come back and get this thing commissioned, which basically means feeding the diesel and lighting it. Um, but what an installation they've, those guys have done. It's, I mean, it's such a nice, tidy job they've done, but look at it. I mean, that is from any angle an impossibly attractive stove. I absolutely love it, it just looks brilliant. It's made the boat feel like a boat now. That is brilliant. Um, Paul did say that they are pretty jam-packed uh, installing these reflex stoves on boats at the moment, but he did say if you want one, there is a discount you can get through this channel. Uh, so if you follow the link in the description of the video, then uh, get yourself to Lockgate and get yourself a discount on one of these or any of the parts of a reflex diesel stove. So get in touch with Paul and the team and they can help you there, but that is just an absolutely brilliant brilliant looking stove I'm chuffed to bits so on Saturday he's going to come back get it commissioned and then Sunday I can sit here and be toasty warm fantastic happy days until next time take care bye bye